Here we're going to talk about XAML markup extensions. The idea here is that assigning a literal value in your XAML is a bit limiting. For example, here I'm assigning three properties. First one's a literal string, and the text property there is a string, so the types match. These two examples are st slightly more interesting because type converters run before the value gets assigned. But still, the core of the idea here is we have hard-coded literal values in our XAML. And that makes it really limiting. For example, it's hard to do more interesting things like set the border width to the same value throughout the application, or what if you don't know the border width value until runtime? So in those cases, you need something more sophisticated than a hard-coded literal. And that's what markup extensions are for. They just give you a little bit more flexibility in how you obtain a value that gets used in XAML. So markup extensions are classes. They all implement this interface, which means they supply this method. So this method gets called during XAML loading. It produces a value, and whatever it returns gets assigned to the attribute in your XAML. So notice the difference. We're not hard coding a value at compile time. Instead, we're computing a value at runtime. There are several markup extensions that are predefined by Xamarin Forms. Some of them come from the XAML spec. Some come from WPF. And then there's one that's unique to Xamarin Forms. In this section, we're going to talk about those three, and a few of the other ones are covered in later sections. The first one we're going to do is static extension. The idea here is you have a symbolic constant in your code behind, and you'd like to write XAML that's going to reach into the code behind and access one of those symbolic constants. And it could be a static property, a static field, or any new value. First, notice the name of the class. There is a naming convention here that most markup extensions follow. They use the extension suffix as part of the class name. That's not required, but it is almost universally followed. Then they have properties. And the, you can think of these as arguments that get passed to the extension to help it do its job. So in this case, the static extension, what you're asking it to do is go to the code behind and look up a member for you. And so you need to tell it what member to look up. That's what that property is for. And of course, it implements the markup extension interface, so it has the provide value method. X colon static will let us access that property from XAML. Here's the finished code about how you would do that. First, notice we're assigning to the border width property right in XAML. And after the double quotes, we have an open curly brace. That's what tells the XAML parser that we're using a markup extension. It tells the parser there's something special going on. We don't have a literal value in this case. Instead, we have an expression that needs to get evaluated in order to produce the value. Then we have an assignment to member equals, and that's telling the static extension which member in the code behind we want to access. So that expression right there is kind of complex, so let's step back a second and break it down one step at a time. So first, notice that we're using the markup extension in line with the attribute syntax, and that's the most common case. There, there's a few situations where you use them with element syntax, but those are pretty rare. Next, notice we start with the curly braces, and again, that open curly brace right after the double quote, that's the key thing. That tells the XAML parser we're using a markup extension, after that, we have the name of the class, in this case, static extension. If the class uses that convention where it has extension as the suffix on the class name, as a convenience, as a shorthand, you can leave off the word extension. And the XAML parser will still figure this out. It, it's, it knows that it, it's looking for a markup extension because it sees that open curly brace. And it will look behind the scenes for a class named static or a class named static extension. So in this case, it will find the appropriate class. Next, you have to say which member you'd like to access. The first part of that is the assembly and the namespace that contains the class. So in this case, XMLNS there, I'm defining a prefix that includes the assembly and the namespace where the main page class lives. And then I have the actual name of the code behind element, in this case, main page dot my border width. 
There's one final simplification. If the uh, markup extension defines a content property, in this case, uh, the static extension does, it, it content property is member, that lets you simplify this a little bit more. So that member equals, you can actually leave that off and slim it down to that. So now we have the minimal use there of the static extension, markup extension. The next one we're gonna look at is x colon type. The job of x colon type is to take a string and produce a type object. So in this case, we're gonna give it the string label. Behind the scenes, it's gonna use a type resolver to obtain the type object for the label class and return it. And here's the last one we're gonna look at, x colon array. This one's interesting because this is one of the only ones that you use with the element syntax instead of the attribute syntax. So notice x colon array there is used as an element. So this lets you create a collection directly in your XAML. You do need to tell the array what the type of the element that it's going to store. And in fact, this is one of the main uses of the x colon type markup extension. So in this case, we're asking x colon type to take that string there, uh, int32, look up the type object for the int32 struct and return it to us. And that's gonna get assigned to the type property of the array markup extension. In real code, this isn't terribly useful because you have hard-coded data in your XAML, but for prototyping, this can be quite useful to get test code into your XAML. Before we end here, let's just look at one special case. Suppose you wanted to produce that as your output. In particular, notice the open curly brace. So open curly brace is a special character in XAML. If you just try to do that, it won't work. You need to escape that open curly brace somehow. And, and of course that closed curly brace on the end that's not significant, it's the open curly brace as the first character in that string that makes this special. So you need to escape that somehow. There's the syntax to do it. Open closed curly brace escapes that next open curly brace and will produce the output we see on the screen.